never be removed. Never be removed. Nothing can remove me. I can never. <laughs> Do you get it? Nothing can remove me. I will never be removed. I will see you one day. I will look into his face because he has secured me in him. He has secured me in him. There is no greater place to be, no more secure place to be than in Jesus. Hallelujah. Are you in Jesus this morning? Are you on that sure, strong foundation today? Hallelujah. Do you feel things cracking under your feet? Do you feel like you're about to fall off one side of the mountain? If you do, you're not on the right foundation. <laughs> because our Jesus is sure. He is steady. He is strong. He will hold you through whatever you're going through.
appreciation, Lord, we love you. For who you are and what you have done for us, God, we glorify your names. For your name is great. Ooh. You know, if you desire his presence, if you desire him to be here with you, to touch your life, you'll be a worshiper. That's what worship does. It brings in his presence. He comes to you right where you are, even if the person beside you doesn't care. He cares about you. If you're reaching out to him, he will touch you. He will inhabit your praise. That's what the word of God says. So we're a worshiping church because we desire his presence. That's what it is all about. Not who is here and who is not, but that he is here and that his presence will rest on us. So this morning, sing praises to him with all your heart, that he may come in and minister to you and you can bless him with your worship this morning. I sing praises to your name. If you need to get away from the distractions, there's always a Thank you. 
and the weakest of the lady folks, if, if they're any weaker, have all had a broken heart at one time. And I know I have. And I know the natural, it takes a long time to get over. But I've got a feeling, even if you didn't a little bit ago, when the Spirit of God was, how many of y'all did feel the Spirit of the Lord, the presence of God? And if you didn't, it's because you didn't want to, or you had your mind a million miles away, and you had it on something else, or you were trying to say, this is not biblical, I just know, I just know how everything ought to be done. You know, there's a lot of Christians that way, amen? A lot of preachers, a lot of Christians, everything else. Just think they know everything. And to be honest with you, until they read that book 50 times, they really don't know a whole lot. Amen. And another thing, God don't do the same thing all the time. How many of you know God's spirit? But I promise you, while the Spirit of the Lord was moving a little bit ago, and if you mean business, and if you'll just say, God, I'm sorry, forgive me for not entering in, but Lord, I need your help, I promise you, the Lord can reach down and even heal your broken heart today. How many of y'all believe that? He healeth the broken heart. That's what he said. And God don't lie. And he's done it for me. How many of y'all that he's really, you know for a fact, he helped you get over something that did break your heart? Look at this. See that? God can help you live again. God, how many of you know he wants to give us life? He comes to give us life and give it to us more abundantly. The thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But he came so we could have life. He wants you to have life, not merely low life. Did y'all catch that? This is the can of beer says Miller High Life, or used to. I don't know what they say now. I haven't seen one. I don't know if they make Miller anymore. Don't care, never did care, never will care. But it's not high life, it's low life, because they had two brothers who drank tons of it, bukus of it. One of them worked at a brewery, and they died early. I hope they repented before. It was too late. But I want you to know we can trust the Lord no matter what you're going through. We can trust the Lord. You know, how many of you know we can trust God? We can trust God. We can trust God. He's a trustworthy God. And he's a loving God. He cares about us. And, and, and we care. We're glad. We want you to make it. We want you to make it. But I, let, let me just encourage you. Whenever you feel the Spirit of God moving in or in, don't, don't sit there like a clammed up rock and and just not respond to the presence of the Lord. If you yield to the presence of the Lord, next thing you know, your eyes are liable to get filled with tears. And God's liable to touch your heart down deep in, on the inside if you'll just surrender everything to Him. You know, we love that song, Francis, I think, referred to it Wednesday night. The old song says we used to sing it. I surrender all. I Surrender all. Listen to it singing. All to Thee, blessed Savior, I surrender all. One more time, singing. I surrender all. I. So we need how much more we need to do that to our great God and Savior and who, who wants to help us through all of our problems, all of our stuff, all of our junk, all of our things. We're going to receive the morning tithe and offering this morning, and we're just so thankful that the Lord has blessed us and able 
helps us to be able to bless him. Amen. Lord, we just pray, God, that your blessings, Lord, will just reign over your over the offering because it is a holy thing and it is worship. And we give our worship back to you, Lord Jesus. We pray that you bless the offering. And Lord, that you bless those who walk in obedience and give. And we give you all the praise for what you're doing and the increase that you bring because of that. In Jesus' name. Amen. There's within my heart. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, y'all can do better than that, I know. <laughs> and this wonderful service that we had, praise and worship there, you ought to still be on fire. Amen. Amen. I thank Pastor uh, Allen and uh, his wife, Sister Frances, for allowing me an uh, opportunity to speak to you all today. And um, we're going to go to a familiar scripture, which is from... Uh, everybody knows this scripture or should know this scripture. It's uh, Psalms 23. If you have your Bibles, go to Psalms 23. Amen. And, and we see on the platform here, the Lord is my shepherd, I should not want. So we're going to look at uh, God's promises that, he's, uh, that, he, that we have in these six verses here. And uh, it's a kind of a personal, um, a personal um, scripture here because what we're looking at, we're looking at our personal relationship with God. 
and, and it's, it's, it's personal when we, when we say the Lord is my shepherd. He didn't say our shepherd, but my shepherd. So this right here knows that it's, it's personal here. And uh, God take care of each and every one of us on a personal level. Amen. And if he's not your shepherd, well, you need to make him your shepherd. Amen. So we'll look at uh, God's promise. Um, um, we'll ask that, 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 the, that the Lord be the, that God be the Lord of your life. I'm a little bit nervous. I haven't done this in a while, but I'll get there. Amen. By the help of God. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we just come in the name of Jesus. We just come thanking you, Lord, for your word, Lord. We realize that you are our shepherd, Lord, and we know that we can't do anything without you, Lord. But we just ask, Lord, that you would intervene in this service, Lord, that you would speak to the hearts of your people, Lord, that you anoint the ears to hear, Lord, what you are saying, Lord, that you would let them cast down every imagination that exalt itself above what your words say, Lord. We just ask that you would just have your way in us, Lord, and have your way through us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. amen. As I was about to say, if the Lord is not our shepherd, then someone else is. So you can make different things your, your shepherd. You can allow different circumstances to cause the Lord not to be your shepherd. But uh, the scripture says that God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son for whosoever never believe on him that uh, they should not perish, but he would give them everlasting life. So if we want everlasting life, we need, we need to realize that we need a shepherd. We need somebody that's going to lead us, going to guide us, and take us through. Amen. If the Lord is not your shepherd, someone else or someone else is. It may be your job, your education, a person, or whatever. If it's, the, if it's not the Lord, it's not your shepherd, your life would be filled with worries and despairs. And I know that we can agree that if we don't have the Lord in our life, I don't know how, as the pastor would always say, I don't know how we, we do to get along without him. Because he loves us. Amen. Amen. So when we look at this, uh, this scripture here, we see that the Lord is our shepherd. It is making it personal to the point that we need to know the Lord for ourselves. And not, not take somebody else's word, but know the Lord for yourself. And then you can really, truly say the Lord is your shepherd. See, I can tell you about the goodness of the Lord. You can see the goodness of the Lord working in my heart. You can see the goodness of the Lord all around me. But you need to know for yourself that the Lord is your shepherd. And, and, the, and the scripture said, the Lord is my shepherd and I should not want. So that means that God is a provider. Amen. Amen. He's a provider. So anything you have need of, God will supply it. According to the scriptures there, he said, Now my God will supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. So if you got any needs, God can supply them. But you got greed, that may be a different story. <laughs> but he will supply your need. Amen? So we looked at the, uh, the next scripture here. These glasses are far on. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me besides the still water. So, we, here we have a leader. We have somebody that cares for us. He makes us to lie down in green pastures. Now, the, when we're lying down in green pastures, that is saying that there is plenty. Our needs are being, uh, our needs are being met. We're looking, we're looking to our author and the finish of our faith, which is Jesus Christ. So our needs are, are being met. So we go back and we look at the Psalms 22, and we look at Psalms 23, and we look at Psalms 24. There, there's a script, there are scriptures in Psalms 22 that let us know that the price that Jesus had paid for us. If you read it and you read it out, you'll see that he paid a, a, a horrible price for us. He had to go through a lot of pain and suffering just so that we can sit in those pastors. That's because we can be, that, that we can be uh, led and be fed. Amen? So when we say is that in, in green pastures, he leads, he leads me besides the still water. Now, sheep won't go in running water. Sheep uh, stay away from running water. 
But Jesus, our master, which is our shepherd, he, he, he makes it. If, he have, if the sheep have to, to um, go to the running water, the, the, the shepherd of that flock would take the, uh, excuse me, take the, uh, my mouth is dry, <laughs> take the, uh, <laughs> take the, um, Take the, uh, lead him to the, uh, to the running waters. He would take his time and he would, he would dam up the, he would dam up the, the water so that it would be still there. And the reason why sheep don't like running water is because the wool and stuff that's on their, their body, if they go close to the water, it would cause them to sink. So if God ever led you around some places that you shouldn't be, uh, <laughs> and, uh, because it was dangerous to you, that's because he cares. See, running, running water, it frightens the sheep. They can't be still. You ever tried to quieten down a, a baby if they're hungry and how they squeal and everything? That's the way sheep are. They can't lie by the still water unless they're at peace. Guess what? We can't sleep at night if we're not at peace. We can't sleep at night, night if things are going through our minds or troubling us and we don't have the... Uh, we don't have the peace that we need. You know, oftentimes they put on the, um, on the, um, what's this, rest in peace, R-I-P, rest in peace. But we don't have to die to be able to rest in peace. What I'm saying is that we can rest in peace if, if we have the Lord in our heart. If we have the Lord as our shepherd, we can rest in peace. Jesus said that the peace that he lead, that he, lead uh, he told his disciples, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world give it I unto you. Let, let your heart be troubled, neither be in afraid. So the Lord wants us to be at peace. He wants us to be at peace. But oftentimes things come in our life, if it's not divorce, if it's not the children, or it's not the job, it could be a number of things that cause us and disturb our peace. And so we need the peace of God in our life. And the peace, what the peace of God does is it comes in and it settles us down. Even though our whole world is falling down around us, the Lord comes in and he says, peace be still. He's letting you know that he's in control. You're not in control, but he's in control. So what a mighty God we serve. Amen. Someone can still... Our, our, deepest, our deepest thoughts, he can steal them. I mean, he can seal them so we don't have to worry about them anymore. Even in the midst of a storm, he can calm us. And we have storms in life, and sometimes the storms, they overwhelm us. But because we have Christ on our side, and he's our shepherd, he can peak, we, can, uh, we can have the peace of God. In verse uh, 3, it says that... He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. So when we look at this scripture right here, all of us need restoring. As the pastor had said this morning, all of, all of us need restoring one time or another. We need restoring because we get weak along the way. We have troubles in our life. We have different things that comes up that cause our peace to be stirred, disturbed and our soul needs to rest. But what the Lord is saying is, is that you are, if you are having problems and you're, you're laden and you're heavy laden, he's saying that he can give you rest. He can bring you to the rest. And how he brings you through the rest by leading you in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. So God's reputation is on the line here. His reputation is on the line. We're, he's, he's leading you because of his name's sake. And when his namesake is on the line, and, and just to make it plain to you all, God is a man that he will not lie. And he's not the son of man that he should repent. So this let us know that God, if he says it, he's going to do it. He's going he's gonna to watch over his word to perform it. So this right here, we can, we, we can count on the Lord to do just what he said he's going to do. Amen. When David talks about the... Um, the restoring of, 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 the, uh, of my soul. The word translate restored means return or go back. It could be translated, he brings me to repentance. 
When we, wander, when we wander from God's sheepfold, he too wants to restore us. Spiritually wonder, wonderful and can be so overcome with guilt that they think he, he doesn't want them back. That can cause feeling of great despair or great dis disappointment. You may say, you just don't know what I've done. You don't know the things that I've been through. But God is telling us to come back. I can restore you. Repent. I can restore you. As Pastor had said that, you know, that the Lord is our shepherd, and by him being the shepherd of the flock, that he have to watch over the sheep. And I agree with him that you have to watch over the, uh, the sheep if you're the shepherd. See, if you're a hireling and someone's in trouble, you could care less because all you're looking for is a paycheck. And we have hirelings out here. We don't have pastors that's really after our heart. As Jeremiah said, he would give you pastors after your heart. So we're, we're grateful that we have a shepherd that watch over his sheep here. I just wanted to give him the uh, praise for that because I understand that. Amen. See, it's not, it doesn't matter what we've done. And, and I'm looking at these notes. I wrote them down or whatever there, but, you know, they're <laughs> messing with me. And I'm skipping around here, but... See, it doesn't matter what we've done or how bad we think we are. Guess what? God knows everything. So he's made, a, he's made an avenue so that you can come and you can have rest and you can have peace. I, I, keep, I, keep, I keep going over this rest and this peace here. I don't know if somebody's peace has been disturbed or what, or they're in a valley of decisions or whatever, but I, I feel like that we, we need to know that God can give us that peace that we're searching for. He can give us that peace that we need. Amen. I got a scripture from Michael 7 and 19. And it says, if you feel guilty about sin, you have already confessed to God. That guilt is not from God. It is from the devil because the devil wants you to feel guilty and unworthy. You see, before you commit a sin, Satan minimizes it by tempting you to think. This is no big deal. Everybody does it. Then after sin, the devil says, this sin is so bad and can never use, be used, uh, you can never be used again. Anybody ever felt that way? You know, we'll, we'll look and we'll say that everybody else is doing it. And then after the devil trick us into, uh, trick us into doing that sin right there, then he tells us how bad we are. That, that lets you know that he is the father, he is the father of lies, as, as the scripture says there. And we look at uh, Micah 17 and verse 19. And uh, this right here says, this right here is telling you how compassionate the Lord is. He will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities and thou will cast all of their sins into the depths of the sea. When God forgives you, he puts your sin into the deep part of the sea and put up no fishing sign. That's what God says. Do you believe him or you believe the the evil one. One of the most amazing things in the Bible is God not only forgives your sin, but, but what else does he promise is the last phrase in Jeremiah 31 and 34. And he shall teach you no, no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them and to the greatest of them, says the Lord, I will forgive their iniquities and I will remember their sins no more. So we confess our sin, God is faithful to forgive us of our sin. He can cast it into the sea of forgiveness there. So, amen, praise the Lord. So we have the fourth promise here, the Lord will lead me. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. My rod and my staff, they comfort me. So we can, we can walk through the valley, through the valley of the shadows of death. And that, as I was studying this, when it says the shadow, the shadow of death, um, I, this thought came into my mind. You know, a lot of times we, we go through things and we think that God is not there. 
Even in death, we think God is not there. So what came to my mind is, how do you get a shadow without a light? If you, if you look, if this light wasn't shining, it wouldn't be a shadow here. So that lets you know that God is always with you. Even in the shadow of death, he's always with you. Because he said he would never leave us or forsake us. So let's let us know that even though you're going through these trials, even though you're going through these tribulations, guess what? He's right there. And what he's doing is he's giving you the strength to go through. You know, the scripture says when you become, when you become uh, weak, that's when, God can, uh, that, that's when God can make you strong, when you become weak. When you uh, forget about your efforts and, and the way that you think that things ought to go, that's when God can step in. When you come to the end of yourself, Pastor said something about surrendering. You know, when you surrender, as he said, you throw your hands up. That's when all the fight is out of you. You let all the fight get out of you, and you come to him. The, the, the Bible says that he's, he's near to them that is, uh, of a contrite spirit and a broken heart. And a lot of times we have to be broken. That's what happens here. He had, to, he had to break the lamb sometime because they're not following him. But guess what? And the, and the brokenness of it, when, they're, when, they're, when, they're, when their feet is broke, guess what? The Lord, I mean, the shepherd has to spend more time with him. You have to spend more time nursing him back. And guess what? You build a relationship. You build a relationship. So everything that we, didn't, that, that we go through is not for our good. As this morning, as Sister Jerry said, it's got purpose in it. It has purpose. So I'm, I'm telling you all today to cheer up. That's, that's what you're going through with. There's purpose in it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to cause you to become closer to God. It's going to cause you to have a closer walk with God. See, many are the afflicted. Many, many is the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord has brought us, us out of all of them. Excuse me, Pastor. <laughs> I didn't quote the scripture that's right, but y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yes, sometimes we are afflicted there. As, as we can see in this, this scripture here, it's a, it's a relationship and it's a personal relationship. Because you see I, my, me, you know. And then at the last end, it, it, it comes down there. Then the Lord is walking right beside him. And that's why we have the shadow there. He's walking there right beside him, you know. He's went through the shadows, <laughs> I mean, put to the valley of death, you know. I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You know, you have the rod. The rod is used for, for a bat. And the bat was there to fight off the enemy. Now, I know this, some say this was the, uh, the, uh, the scripture of, uh, of David. And it said it might have been in his younger years and might have been in his older year. But, uh, you know, the scripture says, I once was young and now I'm old. But never have I seen the, uh, the, the righteous forsaken or a seed begging for bread. So David had a personal relationship with God to the point that he knew that God would do whatever he said he would do. And notice that David was bold. <laughs> David went up against a giant. And a lot of times we have giants in our life. And if we believe what, what God says and what God said he would do, guess what? We can, we can slay that giant. That giant could be numerous of things that we go through in life that, that we look at as giants. In other words, I'm saying it's too big for us. And in essence, it is too big. And that's why we should turn it over to the Lord there. That's, that's, that's why we should turn it over to the Lord and let the Lord have his way in that situation. And I know this right here is easy said and done. But until you go through those trials there, until you're broken, <laughs> you realize that the, God, that, that the God that we serve, he's there all the time. He never leave us or forsake us. So I, I'm just telling us that, you know, that the scripture says in this, in this world that we're going to have the trials and we're going to have the tribulation. But he says that he's overcome those. And so we are more than conquerors. Amen. And if God be for us, who or what can be against us. But well, we have to have that personal relationship. I put all this stuff 
<laughs> down on this paper here. <laughs> I really just want to throw it out there because it kind of threw me off. I, I guess I should have just <laughs> talked from the heart and not <laughs> read, read, this, read this stuff down. But I, I do love the Lord, and I know he's able to take us through any situation that we're in. And we have the scripture, and if you will, um, I got two more verses. You give me a fifth verse there. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemy. Thou anointed my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. We'll look at this about the preparing of the tables before me in the presence of our enemies. So, it, it has an S on there, so there's many, there's many enemies out there. It's not just one, but it's many. And each person has different enemies in their life. But guess what? God has prepared a way. He has prepared a way for you to, uh, to even abound, even in that situation that, you, that you're trying to go through. He's made a way. He's prepared a table for it. It might be through prayer. It might be through suffering a while. But guess what? God has made a way. He has made a way. For in the scripture it says that I am the way, <laughs> the truth, and the life. So, and you can't get past God because nobody comes to the Father but through the Son. Amen? So that lets us know that, that you know, if we're going to depend on anybody, it should be God. We can't depend on our friends. We can't depend on our families. We can't depend on uh, the economy. We can't depend on the government. Uh, the, uh, the scriptures tell us that we don't put our trusts in, in kings and princes and stuff. And this is in the book of Psalms. I may be quoting the wrong scripture, but I think it's Psalms 118, if I, if I remember right. So he tells us not to put our trust in, in, in those things. And we have enemies that's, that's all around us. It could be on the job. <laughs> it could be right there in your home there. <laughs> that, that's, that's causing you... That's called, that's causing you problems or getting you off of, uh, again, <laughs> that's leading you away from what God says there. And what I like about the scripture where it says that he lead us in the righteousness, with God you won't go wrong because he's always going to lead you in the right way. You may not like it, but guess what? He's going it's it's to lead you in the right way. I had to go through some trials. I had to go through some tribulation. And, I, and like I said, we all have to. But one thing I do know, that God would always lead you in the right direction. Just when you've given up and saying that you don't have, have your way, God can, uh, can whisper a, a soft word to you. And sometimes it's one word. Sometimes it's a scripture. Whatever. But God will get you through that problem that you're going through. It could be sickness. You know, um, the scripture uh, says that, that Paul tried Ask, ask, God, ask God to move this, this storm from his flesh. And he asked three times there. And, and God denied him every time. But he said, one thing he said, his grace is sufficient. So it, there may be some things that, that we're asking God for and we hadn't got an answer for. And we keep, <laughs> he keeps saying, my grace is sufficient. Or he might be telling us to wait. Because we, we can get weary in well-doing. Well, God, I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to do. I'm doing this. I'm getting up. I'm praying. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> I'm doing all this, Lord. Why, why, are these things, why are these things happening to me? I know somebody out there can say amen. Because <laughs> I, I, I've used those words before. But you can't buy a blessing. He's going to give it to you freely. Amen. You can't, you can't buy one, but you can trust God to give you one. Amen? You can, kick, you can trust God to deliver you from the situation that you're in. Amen? Let me get the last verse here. So it says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Amen? So, the shepherd leads, we follow. The shepherd leads, we follow. But 
while we're following the shepherd who's behind us because the shepherd is not looking back. Goodness and mercy is following us. God's goodness and his mercy is following us. And you think about that. It's following us. Goodness and mercy. You ever got something that you thought that you didn't deserve? That's grace. That's God's goodness. You should have been dead, but God saw fit to keep you alive. That's mercy. Should have lost your mind. <laughs> should have lost your mind. But God is sending his grace and his mercy there, and they're following you. That's if the Lord is your shepherd. As, as the scripture says that, you know, we, we have to realize that God's reputation is on the line. And God's not a man that he should lie again if he said he's going to do it. But well, will we receive that in our heart? Okay, uh, will you give me um, uh, Matthew 11, 28, and 29? And I'm about to conclude here. I'm throwing my paper away. <laughs> So, in reading this, I came to this scripture here. It says, come to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your soul. So, the scripture is telling us if you're laden and you're heavy laden, you need to come to the altar so that the Lord can give you rest. When, when the Lord says, take of my yoke and learn of me. As I was reading, I was doing uh, some studying here. They said that Jesus was a carpenter by, by trade. And, and you would think in that time when we say a carpenter by trade, you think that it's it's house building and stuff, but if you look back in those times, they did a lot of farming and stuff back there. When I said farming, you know, excuse my language, but anyway, they did a lot of farming uh, back in those times, and I imagine that Jesus made a, a bunch of yokes, and he and, and they said in, in taking a yoke and putting it on, putting it on someone. I mean, putting it on an animal there, that it, it, it had to be built a certain way or you wouldn't get the work out of the yoke. So, I mean, out of the uh, animals there. But he said that my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So a lot of times we don't want to go through different things because we think of it as being a burden. But Jesus said his yoke is easy and his burden is light. So you have to ask your, your, yourself if you're going through a hard time and, and you, are, you have to ask who you're yoked up to. Amen? Because he said that for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So it's easy. I'm going to tell you all a story about a, um, a man that was, um, he had a cross and he went to the cross store. And as he went to the cross store, um, it had a sign up there that says, trade in, your, trade in your cross. And so we know that the scripture tell us that take up your cross and follow me. You know, deny yourself and take up your cross and follow me. So before I get to my point here, um, a lot of times we want to take on stuff that we're not, God hadn't called us and it's not our purpose. What I'm saying is, we may see someone doing something that's, that's um, that, oh, I could do that. You know how we, we do that? But it just doesn't fit. It does, it's that, that, that yoke just doesn't fit you because that's, that's not what God called you to do. And uh, sometimes we miss our purpose in life because we're trying to do like everyone else does instead of just yoking up and ask God, what is my purpose? What would you have? Me to do? What direction should I take? You know, the, the scripture tell you, 
lead not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge God and allow him to direct our path. Sometimes we want to direct our own path and we don't have success and then we want to blame God because we didn't follow his instructions there. So back to the part about the, 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 uh, the guy that had the cross. So he came in and he, he told the guy he wanted to trade in the, um, the cross. So he went to one cross and he said, this cross is, is too heavy. So he moved on and he moved down a little bit more and he says, well, this cross right here feels right, but still it's, it's too heavy. So he walked around the store trying out crosses and stuff and then he came back and he, he found a cross that he liked. So he, he got on that cross and said, mm, this cross fit me just right. And the cross that he picked up was the same cross that he traded in. So this, this shows you that God has purpose and that God uh, won't put no more on you than you can bear. In other words, what I'm saying is, is that all of us have a burden to, uh, to, to carry. All of us have a, a, uh, a cross to bear there. All of us have a cross to bear. But we, we have to bear that cross. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. And if we take up our cross and follow him, we're going to have success, even through the trials, even through the tribulations there. Thank you all, and thank you, Pastor. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'll tell you, I appreciate all the, I mean, there was a lot of Bible he brought out and all the teachings and preaching this morning. And uh, aren't you glad we've got a, a great shepherd and that wants to lead us beside the field, Lord, and be the most to give us and not hold the past against us. And I hope that you really grabbed a hold of something there. Something he said, I want to sing the goodness of God as we close. You know, you know, something he brought out, I never even thought about it like that. You know, when he said, the ain't all walked through the valley of the shadow of death. You know, you may be walking through something that, who looks like it's about to overwhelm you and get you. And the shadow, he talked about that shadow. The Lord promised, he brought out that he's always with us. And when he's there, just like he said, there's light. He's right beside you. And it's casting the shadow. And if he wasn't there being the light that he is, we wouldn't see that shadow. And then I heard a guy one time say that a shadow don't hurt nobody. Sometimes we're scared of a shadow of a spook. But when the Lord comes in there, be a shadow, and it's probably us, you know, casting that shadow. But you know, please, please, no, I hope you believe. You know, he, he used so many scriptures there that were so good and so fitting, and we appreciate it. And uh, he might have been nervous because some of y'all have been looking at him like that or whatever, you know. But I, I appreciate Brother Larry so much. I, I kind of fell in love with him. I got a little better acquainted with him when I went and talked to Homo with him. Man, I heard, I heard all kinds of stuff. I even know some stuff about Patricia now. <laughs> and, uh, you, you'll be in trouble now with that. But you know, he closed out with the goodness of God. Aren't, aren't you glad that God is so good to us? He don't beat us over the head with what we've done and who we've been or nothing else. So if you want to, you said our stand. I just want to sing it. And, and if, you, if you want Brother Larry to pray for you over something, then maybe that old cross is heavy. You know, that, that yoke has that cross up on it, that cross beam, and, and that pulls on you. But Jesus said, if we'll come, like he said, to him, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That old thing you're carrying around, he'll help you with it. He said, come unto me. And so if somebody up here wants special prayer, Brother Larry, I want you to pray with them if they do come. You pray with them at the altar. Listen to me.
Oh yes, I will see. 